Brother Mo, Brother Mo, Brother Mo. Okay, this is the episode where we talk about how it all started, right? Um, the last we left it, I, th- I think there was some kind of discussion about the rich dad, poor dad phenomenon. And I don't know whether this is offline or online. But maybe you can start by telling me how it is that a young guy, right, with all your pressures and all your peer group, you know, you have taken the path of less trodden. What's the idea there? Yeah, well, if anything, Chong, this, uh, this path, uh, it was not something that I envisioned myself on. Um, I too was part of the, you know, uh, have succumbed it to what my peers have, or even if they're why you say this. Um, but there was a point in time, a realization uh, that happened for me. But my journey, if anything, started a lot earlier. I think um, I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit ingrained in me. Uh, my dad runs his own business. My dad is the most hardworking person I've ever known. Um, You know, since I was young, I remember, I think I was nine years old and I used to follow him on his business trips. Uh, He would bring me all over the world so that, you know, to, uh, and he does a lot of training and a lot of consulting. And since then I've been looking at him, I said, wow, my dad really is super hardworking. And, and back then he was, uh, he was about 40, he was in his forties and fifties. And when I was 10 years old, I said, um, I was in admiration. But I told myself, um, I'm not going to be like him. Uh, you know, I, 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 as, much as, I, yeah, as much as I really admire him and he's been a very great role model, um, I had my own vision of, you know, being financially independent on, you know, not, not, not needing to be so hardworking at that age. So, you know, I, I, I've always wanted to become an entrepreneur and I really thought that, you know, the only way for me to make money was to try to, create stuff and he's always been telling me as well you know you have to be able to solve a problem uh, and then that's where uh, money actually comes in um, and you know and, and I knew from the start that uh, I had to go down this route so when I was about 14 years old uh, that was my first real encounter with big money um, I, 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 I found out about this website Chuang, called Taobao back then you know it was a very oh, Taobao. obscure chain. yeah Taobao one of the Ali, Alibaba was, ones right Yes, correct. Yeah. But back then it was, uh, it was like a classified page. Uh, you couldn't really understand it. You had to have like a Chinese bank account. So when I was 14, I befriended some guys from uh, China and asked him whether he could help me buy a box of uh, these electric lighters. Uh, and uh, I thought it was really cool. You could charge it with a USB and stuff like that. So when that thing first arrived, I said, okay, how do I flip this? Right. I think it was like a dollar or two dollars, close to two dollars a piece. So I went to uh, the mall and, and back then they had these uh, push carts in the middle of the shopping centers. I approached one of the guys and I said, hey, you want to buy a lighter from me? I'm, I'm selling this for $3. Uh, <laughs> no <a> way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was my thing. And then he looked at it and was like, oh, this is pretty cool. He said, okay, I'll, I'll take it. He took the whole box. You know, he took the whole box. I think there was about 300 pieces or something. I took some and gave to my friends and all. Uh, and then a week later, uh, sorry, about a month later, I said, whoa, I was sitting on a, lots of cash. So that bought my PlayStation 2. Uh, you know, I think I got new shoes from it as well. I was 14, right? I was blowing a lot of cash. And the next, uh, the next, the next month I went there, I said, hey, you want to buy some more? And they said, oh, don't need. I already found a supplier. So <laughs> I think that was one of the life lessons that, you know, never leave the delivery address uh, on the box when you send it over to your supplier. <laughs> So that was a hard lesson that I could learn, you know, uh, just for, uh, that was my first encounter as well um, when it came to money. And I figured uh, this was probably the route for me. Um, I, I, I knew the fact that, you know, I, I couldn't, I mean, it's not that I can't uh, get a nine to five job and there's nothing wrong with a nine to five job, but it doesn't really excite me. For myself, I, I see that uh, as, as my peers go down this career route that they have and stuff like that, uh, I've always taken that, uh, rocky road and I've always wanted things to be a lot harder because I, f- I find that at the end of the day if it's, it's harder it's sweeter at the end of the day you know yeah so, yeah. so that's that's, uh, that's how I got into myself into saying that yeah let me try something new yeah yeah like Tom Cruise once said uh, I think it was in Vanilla Sky he said the good is never as good without the bad right you gotta know yeah. the bad before you know the good um, but what was your dad doing why was his position in, in, the, in the world formative for you? Because you said he had his oh, own business, yeah. right? But he, but he was pushing the envelope? Was he under a lot of stress? Was there not a lot of money? I mean, what is the position there? So I come from a very big family. 
um, there's, there's six of us. And uh, my dad's and he's told us this, his greatest investment is, is in his children. Um, and we're not, we don't come from a very well-to-do family. I mean, it, we're comfortable enough, thankfully, thank God for that. Um, we've never really had to struggle, but I've always seen it in a situation where by uh, at the end of the month, there isn't enough or even in fact, we just, you know, just scraping by enough to pay the mortgage, enough to pay the credit card bills, enough just for the car installment. And that was it. Um, and obviously food on the table. And we were very grateful for that. But that I knew from, from then on that, you know, this is not something that I would want to live because it's not sustainable in that sense where I have to be able to work every month to be able to put food on the table, to be able to pay that bill. And I just figured there must be another way, you know, being, having that entrepreneurial spirit in me, I figured there must be another way than working a nine to five job uh, and be able to get this financial freedom that I've always been looking for. So my dad has been a career person all his life. In fact, if anything, up to the point where he was 42, that's when um, I was living in Jakarta back then he was, a HR director for a chemical company. And when, and when the whole um, economic crisis hit in 97, 98, that's when we moved back um, to Singapore actually. And that's when he started his own first, uh, his business because technically he quit his job and there wasn't anyone who was gonna hire a 45 year old at that point in time. Um, so when he started his job, uh, it was very tough for him, obviously, uh, you know, uh, and that's when I, I guess uh, at that age, when I was about 10 and 12, I, when I really followed him throughout his business, I saw that, well, my dad, you know, at his age, he's pushing, it. Um, he's traveling every week, he's, he's, he's going out, meeting new clients, getting new jobs, just to put food on the table, just to pay that mortgage, just to pay that credit card bill. And it was a continuous cycle. It was very cyclical, right? Um, just kept going and going and going. Um, until a couple, until about two years ago, and then he said, you know what, I'm going to retire because I've got enough kids to be able to um, lead a life a lot more meaningful. Uh, I think that's also something that he realized that, you know, uh, it's time for him to slow down. So I, I, I really took that upon, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is the eternal bane of the corporate salary man, right? Because your, your, your salary is capped and whatever increase in income you're going to get is based on the on the whole situation in terms of how the economy is doing and how generous your, your boss is, right? I've never heard of a, an employer giving more than a 5 or 10% salary increase. I mean, that's that's unheard of, right? Unless you work in Morgan Stanley or something and then you're getting, I don't know, millions and millions in bonuses. And you know what you say is true. The, the only way to get rich is by either starting your own business, becoming a very astute investor or basically having a, 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 fa a rich family to... to to give you money in an in an inheritance, right? Forget the lottery. Forget winning in in whatever four D. Forget it. It's not it's not going to happen, right? Um, so the the only way to financial freedom is earning more and spending less. If you can do both, I mean that is the holy grail. Exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's something that we 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 try to advocate as well. Um, earning more might be a lot harder. Uh, and it's out of your control, you know, you, you, you gotta get a better job and stuff like that, you know, you gotta, it depends on what the market is doing with your investments and all this. But something that you can really control is spending less. And that's something that we try to advocate as well. Uh, from the start, you know, there's something um, to live within your means. Uh, now there's this, there's, I think I was like a recent quote, I was reading something like, you know, a, a life uh, led uh, without trying to impress anyone is wealth creation. Uh, and that's something that, you know, I, I feel that, yeah, you know, there's, there's no one that you need to impress. Um, for example, I always joke with my friends who, you know, drive uh, nice cars. There's nothing wrong with it. But then I figured when, when, you, when you're driving that G-Wagon, who's the one that is actually seeing it? You're seeing it from the inside. You, you see the protons and the, you know, and the produas. <laughs> so, and everyone sees, wow, that's a nice car. Yeah. So I guess it's all about mindset as well, Chong, you know. Um, how, how we actually grew up thinking about it. Um, and I think family background also plays a lot of importance from this. Um, we've been very grateful uh, and also very uh, blessed with whatever that we have. Um, but there's always an aspiration to be do better and do better. But fundamentally, we need to know what is enough. Uh, I think that's a good starting point as well.
for us to achieve better things, you know. Yeah, the social conditioning is so true, you know, Mo. Um, mm. it, and it, it's so contingent about what kind of people your parents were, uh, how much, how, how invested or how interested they were in offering a, a vision of their lives and, and how wealthy or how not wealthy they were, right? And what, what is that famous saying? Um, you spend all your time and all your money buying th- things to, to impress people that you don't even lo- know or like. I mean, that is the, yeah. the biggest folly for human beings, but that's what we do all the time. We buy the latest car, we buy the latest phone, just so that you, when you go out to the cafe, to the restaurant, you can say, oh, here's the latest iPhone 12 Pro Max, right? It's not as if you use the whole bloody, all the all the capabilities of that phone, no way, right? But it's just a show off, right? How much other phone do you use? And if you buy a Lamborghini, let's just say you buy a Huracan, right? How often are you going to go, going to go at 200 miles an hour? You're not going to. <laughs> but the bloody yeah, thing exactly. gives you a headache. <laughs> you know, I, I can't think of anything worse right now than owning a Lamborghini, honestly, right? Between you and me. No, don't tell anybody else, okay? Because it's a big secret. <laughs> <Check. laughs> but, but just imagine, just imagine trying to park the bloody thing at Mid-Valley. Forget about it, man. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I actually, uh, well, not, not a lot of people know this. I'm actually from, uh, I'm Singaporean. So, you know, and growing up in Singapore, I see all these supercars in Singapore but they always forget that there's a speed limit of 90 and cameras everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they can't go much, you know, it's a 20 minute sprint and they have to stop. Yeah. It's insane. But yeah, but, I mean, but, but, but Singapore, Singapore is a society where money talks, right? And if you don't have money, you're kind of like one of the lesser people. Do you know what I mean? Did, did you feel that? And how yeah. the, the, the challenge must have been even harder for you, man, to have come from Singapore and be a minimalist. Yeah, well, um, I mean, there are, I mean, every country has their social uh, stigmas and, you know, uh, social nuances that they adapt to. Um, but living in Singapore has actually, in fact, if anything, has, has shaped my lifestyle. Um, land is in scarcity, so we don't have the luxury of having a lot of land or, you know, keeping a lot of stuff. Um, the, the, the house that my parents live can barely fit one car, yet alone here in Malaysia, you see multiple cars in a garage, right? Um, so if anything, it has really taught me to live within, you know, what, what we can um, in that sense. Um, and because it's so expensive, everything's so expensive there. So we have less of everything. <laughs> and I think um, if anything, when, when, I, when I moved here to Malaysia, I think, wow, you know, uh, I, could, I could probably get a lot. But do I really need to? Uh, I think that's one of the questions that maybe we always have to ask ourselves as well, uh, whether... Does that, does, that, does that thing really excite me as much? Um, I'm looking at long-term things. What really matters to me is time with family. I think that's the most important thing as well. Um, I, I, I enjoy experiences and that's something that I pride as well. So I'd pay, I'd pay for a 200 ringgit steak uh, and have that, and, you know, and, and enjoy it as a nice meal, but I won't pay for like a, you know, a $200 t-shirt. Definitely not. Uh, but it's still two hundred dollars that you're spending uh, in that one hour. Uh, so it, it really depends on the experience, or or even if, if you want to acquire stuff, or you want to acquire memories, it's something that you know you have to really look into. You have just encapsulated the millennial mindset there, Mo, because <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Um, the impression people from my generation are getting. Um, about people from your generation is that you are less hung up on buying the the car. You're less hung up about buying the property, but you're more invested in the experience. You would rather spend your money on a holiday. You would rather spend a lot of money on a good meal rather than on the bloody $200 t-shirt, which at the end of the day is only a t-shirt. But the time that you spend savoring that that whatever five-star meal with your mates is immeasurable, right? Um, how did you guys get this way? H- how did that mindset come into the picture because it's only been one generation one and a half generations at most yeah. I think if you, if, you, if you really look at it um, you know um, we're, we're moving towards a new way of consumption right uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of economists were talking about it back in the late 90s and early 2000s was the fact that we're moving from an ownership to access uh, a, con- a sort of consumerism whereby no one owns anything everything's all access 
back then you would have you know shelves and shelves of albums uh, for you to play a song now it's just a spotify membership that you can you know click at any time you can cancel at any time so i think the way we are consuming things also has shaped um, you know how how the millennial generation has really we think and it's more about access than ownership if anything but that also comes in a question where you know everyone's starting to rent and stuff like that so if you're renting and and who actually owns this it's is you guys here <laughs> you you're probably your generation still owns this and we are just you know and you're custodians of that and we're just able to access it at the end of the day yeah i'll tell you a story right um a couple of years ago before mco hit before covid was discovered i was in the himalayas i was in nepal actually and i came across all these guys that were on the trail i was thinking the anapona base camp trail okay it's one of the most beautiful mountains in the in the world right I met this uh, young Taiwanese girl hiking alone, okay? I met this young Spanish couple, also just two of themselves, right? Both of them, the Taiwanese girl was working in a travel agency, very stressed out. She said to herself one day she said, "Screw this, I'm going to quit my job. Um n- not worry about the consequences, okay? And then use my tra- my money to travel." She she had been on the road for 6 months already by then, you know, mate. Mo, she was traveling wow. solo for six months, and her latest trip was to to do the Annapurna base camp, right? And then the young, the young Spanish couple, I think no more than thirty, thirty-one years old, okay, not married, but boyfriend, girlfriend for a number of years, right? They also had um, said, "Screw this, we're going to quit our jobs, Let's go and see the world." You know what they did? They just they 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 sold everything in their flat, gave up the lease, and just hit the road, and they had been traveling for a year, okay? They said. In Spain, they can't afford to buy their own property. They don't want to buy a car because it will tie them down. So they just what they do now is they just go from place to place, see the whole world, and then once they run out of money or they come near to running out of money, they go and work somewhere. They teach English or or they do some web design or something, and then they keep going. I see that all over the place. It actually began in my generation, but today it's it's very very common, and especially among Asians as well. Asians, you know, one generation ago. When I went backpacking in Thailand, right, you never see any Asians. You never see any Malaysians. Today, there's Japanese, there's Taiwanese, there's Malaysians, there's Indonesians, there's Thais everywhere. I don't know why you're still here. You should be traveling around the world as well. But you want to be a millionaire. Well, I you? used to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, being a millionaire is one thing. So, but why, why do you, why do you think that is though? Like, I mean, from your perspective, why 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 do you think that there's a uh, there's this whole change in in um, with the way we live? I think I think your generation are pissed off with my generation. I think you guys have seen the shit that my people, well, my age, you know, the boomers and and the people of like Donald Trump and what they've done. They said, look, you know, th- these guys can destroy the world any time. Let's just live in the moment because we can't plan too far ahead. If you had tried to plan ahead last year, they would have got it would not have got new anywhere because of COVID, right? There's no way you can plan in the future anymore. If you vote in an election in Malaysia, that government might change, right? <laughs> Because of nothing within your control. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean, right? So, yeah. screw the long-term planning. Screw the mid-medium-term planning. Let's just live in the moment. Because let's let's eat now and 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 enjoy. Because tomorrow we may die, and as I think it's that at, at the end of the day. And I don't blame you guys, man. Because if you live in the moment, that that's where real happiness is. I think. Because a lot of my people, my generation, some of these guys are bloody rich, man. You know, I I mix. I'm not not that I mix with them. I I interact with some of these people. They've got more money than God. Do you know what I mean? But they're miserable mother crushers, man. They are. Yeah. You know, they're stressed <laughs> about their Lambo. They're stressed about their wife. They're stressed about their mistress. They're stressed about their kids. The kids are being useless. They got two thousand people in their under their employment. They can't leave because they're responsible for their livelihoods. I mean, they're miserable yeah. creatures, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I echo, I echo that, Chong. If, if anything, you know, I, I feel that our generation are uh, also pissed off uh, because we're paying for the prosperity that um, you know the, the guys like ten, twenty years had. Yeah. Uh, when when everything was cheaper, everything was doing great and stuff like that, and only now we're starting to feel the consequences of it. Right, everything's getting more expensive, and who is it to blame? And who and us? We're the young, we're we're the young ones entering the workforce and get you know only about to start our life if anything, and then we're hit by all these things that we have to pay. Like an average student, we're probably who goes into work has 
has already accumulated maybe about 70 to 80,000 ringgit in debt just from getting a degree, right? And that is something that uh, it's, it's like I mentioned, it's very, um, you know, it just goes on in a cycle. Um, they do that, they get a job uh, only to pay for that debt. And then when they get a higher raise, only to pay for that car that they, 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 they don't need. Um, and, and if anything, it's a mindset that it has to change. And I think a lot more people are starting to realize that that's not the way to live. Um, and what you mentioned, you know, we, we, it's, it's only temporary. It's a very short period in time uh, in retrospect, you know, um, and what we have to start making the best use of it. And all this technology and stuff as an well, yeah, I want to be able to go to Kathmandu and stuff like that because uh, it's accessible. You know, I can access it. All I have to do is just a plane ticket and I'm already there. I'll figure out how I'm going to uh, eat. You know, beans and toast doesn't sound that bad. You know, if you're climbing up a mountain, then that's something that you enjoy. No, man, all you got to eat up there is Dalbat anyway. Dalbat is, is damn nice for the first three days. And after that, it's just disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the other thing that I'm noticing as well, dude, is is the fact that, um, you know, when you talked about how kids nowadays, they come out, graduated with a degree, and it's like they're 80,000 ringgit in debt, right? Now, that's even if you just do it locally. Forget about doing it abroad, right? And then they come out, they get a job. If they can get a job in the first place, they're being paid, what, 2,000 ringgit a month, 2,005, 3,000, right? It's going to take them years before. I mean, okay, 36,000 a year, right? It's going to take you... Um, um, three or four years just to come even near to paying back when you account for inflation as well. well it's a long time. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. No, that, that is, in fact, if anything, that's uh, even longer because you haven't accounted for his expenses, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the other day, that's, I tried to hire someone um, for my other business, right? And he had been, he, he's, he graduated in economics for three years, right? Um, no, actually, sorry, he was in his final year of economics. But doing on his own expense a year's uh, course on his own expense with a um, virtual learning in app design and navigation, he was more marketable to me for his studying app design than economics, mm. right? Because that's the future, yeah. right? So to me, forget economics. I don't care about economics. If you can design me an app with an amazing navigation and which is intuitive and easy to use, dude, you're on board, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. and forget about I, the eighty thousand. Yeah. You know, eighty thousand ringgit degree. Forget about it. Forget about it. Yeah, my my kids are gonna go to uh, YouTube University, man. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, man. That that's the way forward. Yeah. So then, all these guys like Epsom College. I shouldn't share. I shouldn't name names, right? So these private schools and these universities. My God, you're gonna come out a few hundred thousand in debt. Forget about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. forget about it. I think, I think a lot of, well, my generation is starting to realize that, you know, uh, with the access that we're getting towards uh, how we consume things, um, everything's at our fingertips. Um, there's no need for uh, authorities or bodies to be telling us, you know, hey, this is supposed to be it. Uh, even in fact, I can tell you when I was in, when I was in university, they were teaching me stuff that, that was uh, being implemented in the 90s in terms of advertising. And, oh my God! Uh, Are you serious? You know, <laughs> and I, 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 I was, I was just there. I was just there for the uni, uni parties, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, but I did a lot. I had a lot of fun as well. Uh, I think, like, like I mentioned, for me, I took away the experience of it. Um, I was studying in London. It's two years there. Met a lot of friends. Met a lot of connections. Uh, obviously, that has helped me out through my uh, my life as well to get me to where I am today. And I've met good relationships with along the way. And I cherish that part, but um, yeah, I don't think I am applying anything that I've ever learned <laughs> in right. today. And I would assume there's a lot more of the same. Yeah, I learned more than uh, I learned more in twenty minutes from a YouTube video than I ever did. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> exactly. Right, yeah. that's the that is one of the modern world's biggest crimes for you to be in the hole in debt for a few hundred thousand ringgit to come out with a degree that you can't get a job with. Then that that also doesn't teach you much to be used in in daily lives. I mean, I think I think we talked about this the last time. One of the base, biggest, and most important skills in life is to manage your own money wisely. We don't learn that in university. We don't learn that in school. We rarely learn that from our parents. We've got to go through life and making mistake after mistake after mistake before you know coming out maybe on the wrong side of forty. Then suddenly realizing, I shouldn't have bought that BMW. I shouldn't have taken on that <laughs> platinum credit card. You know what I mean? Because it just got me yeah. to so much problems. 
So which is why I love what you guys are doing, man. I, I love I love what yeah. you guys are doing. I love the fact that your app is being run by three young guys, you know, because you can relate. That's that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, that's something that we want to be able to uh, try to put forth as well. You know, like uh, I think I mentioned this as well as the fact that you know we're not we're not here trying to teach you something that uh, you know it's coming from the books that you could probably read on your own, but instead we're experiencing the same problems as well. We understand what you go through, um, and from the mistakes that we've made for, you know, um, I'm being in my, in my 30, I'm 30 this year. And if anything, uh, we, the target audience that we're reaching are really the younger generation, the Gen Z's, the 18 to 24 year olds. These are the guys, if we can get them at the start to be able to shape their mindset and relationship when it comes to money, then I think, you know, it, it, and we, we hope when they actually move on, when they actually get, get a first job, get a good paying salary, they know what to do with it. So what's because the message today? Better. What's the message from this week's podcast then? If we can sum it all up, right? What is the one thing to take away from today? I think the desire to learn uh, shouldn't be dependent on uh, anyone to tell you what to do. Uh, it is your own uh, learning has to be has to come from you. Um, there's 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 two schools of thought. I mean, if there's education and there's also learning. Uh, it doesn't normally equate one to one. Uh, because when you learn something, and humans actually learn from their own mistakes, that's the only way we learn. That's the only way we know how to learn. You know, as a baby, you fall, say, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to climb the uh, cradle, right? Uh, then I know that, you know, it's not going to hurt. Yeah, I think that's how humans are actually supposed to do. And you're supposed to make these mistakes. Uh, but so learning from mistakes is definitely one thing. And that's something that we at Hey Alfred try to teach you. Um, so with the with 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 the notifications that we send you and saying that hey you know you're spending a little bit too much that's a mistake but you've got next week you know? uh, it's okay to make these mistakes um, but let's try to figure out how we cannot make them again. Yeah, man, couldn't said, couldn't have said it better myself. And mistakes are important. Just that to try and make those mistakes as small as possible and try and make the big decisions, the right decisions, as big as possible. All right. At, exactly. at the end of the day that, that's, that's what it's going to be okay brother thank you very much this is the end of our podcast we're going to be doing a weekly podcast every every uh, every week um, we're going to try and do it religiously for the next um, I don't know as long as we can <laughs> for yeah. as long as yeah. technology allows <laughs> us to do that um, so yeah I mean you can see below the um, the social media handles for Mo for, for, for Hey Alfred uh, and for Adam as well so, so subscribe to them give them a like and subscribe to this channel Tell your friends about it and share. So, again, thank you all very much. Peace out. Thanks, Sean.